Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and in this lesson we're going to talk about rotational dynamics. Our objectives include understanding the moment of inertia or rotational inertia of an object depends on the distribution of mass within that object or system, and also determining the angular acceleration of an object when an external torque or force is applied. So let's start by talking about types of inertia. Inertial mass, or translational inertia, is an object's ability to resist a linear acceleration. On the other hand, moment of inertia, or rotational inertia, is an object's resistance to a rotational acceleration. Now, objects that have most of their mass near the axis of rotation have smaller rotational inertias than objects with more mass farther from the axis of rotation. And this is described by the equation capital I, which is our symbol for moment of inertia, is equal to the sum of mass times the square of the radius, where R is the distance from the axis of rotation to wherever that mass is distributed. So, here let's take a look at the moment of inertia for some common objects. You'll notice on the left over here, we have the teapot. That's just showing that for any object, you can do the sum of mr squared. The other objects, it's done those calculations for you. All right, sample problem. Find the moment of inertia of two five kilogram masses joined by a meter long rod of negligible mass when rotated about the center of the rod. And then we're gonna find the moment of inertia when we rotate it about one of the masses. So let's start with the top one here. The moment of inertia, capital I, is the sum of all mr squareds, which is going to be m1 r1 squared, where this is m1, and this distance is r1. We'll make this m2, and this distance will be r2. So plus m2 r2 squared which will be our mass one is five kilograms, R1, if that whole thing is one meter, R1 must be half a meter, so 0.5 squared, plus five kilograms times 0.5 meters squared, which gives me 2.5 kilogram meters squared for my moment of inertia when it's rotated about this point. Now, if we rotate it about one of the end masses, moment of inertia I is again the sum of mR squared, but now we've got m1 at a distance of r, r1, so that's five times one squared, plus our second mass five, but it's no distance from the axis of rotation, so times zero squared, which is just going to be five kilogram meters squared. Notice we have a larger moment of inertia for the bottom situation. It will be harder to accelerate this rotationally. All right, taking a look at Newton's second law. We've talked about Newton's second law. The acceleration of an object is equal to the net force applied divided by the object's inertial mass, or net force equals mass times acceleration. We have the corollary to that in the rotational world that says the angular acceleration of an object, alpha, is equal to the net torque applied divided by the object's moment of inertia, or net torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. So let's do an example with that. Mel spins a top with a moment of inertia of 0 0.001 kilogram meters squared on a table by applying a torque of 0 0.01 newton meters for two seconds. If the top starts from rest, find the final angular velocity of the top. Well, let's start with what we know. Moment of inertia is 0 0.001 kilogram meters squared. We know our initial rotational velocity is zero. We're trying to find our final rotational velocity. We don't know our angular displacement or our angular acceleration, but we know all this occurs in a time of two seconds. So let's start by trying to find the angular acceleration. We can use the equation net torque is equal to I alpha, or rearranging alpha equals net torque divided by the moment of inertia. Well, our net torque is 0.01 Newton meters, so 0.01 divided by our moment of inertia, 0 0.001 kilogram meters squared, for an angular acceleration of 10 radians per second squared. 
So now I know my angular acceleration is 10 radians per second squared. I can use my rotational kinematics now to find the final angular velocity. I'll do that by writing final angular velocity is initial angular velocity plus angular acceleration times time, which is going to be, well, our initial angular velocity is 0 plus alpha. We just determined that was 10 radians per second squared times our time of 2 seconds. So we will get a final angular velocity of 20 radians per second. Great, let's take a look at another example. What is the angular acceleration experienced by a uniform solid disk of mass 2 kilograms and radius 0.1 meter when a net torque of 10 newton meters is applied? We're going to assume the disk is spinning about its center. Well, let's start off by finding, using our formula, net torque equals I alpha. And I can remember that the moment of inertia of a disk rotated about its center is one half its mass times its radius squared. And if you don't know that, that's something you can go look up. That implies then that the net torque equals mr squared, one half mr squared, times alpha. But if we want alpha, let's rearrange this to say that alpha, our angular acceleration, is 2 times the net torque divided by mr squared, which will be 2 times our net torque, 10 newton meters, divided by our mass, 2 kilograms, and our radius, 0.1 meter squared, which gives us a total angular acceleration of 1,000 radians per second squared. All right, let's take a look at one more sample problem, the teddy bear picnic. Four teddy bears on a roundabout on a playground with a moment of inertia of 100 kilogram meters squared starts at rest and is accelerated by a force of 150 newtons at a radius of one meter from its center. If this force is applied at an angle of 90 degrees from the line of action for a time of half a second, what is the final rotational velocity of the roundabout? Well, again, let's start with what we know. Our initial angular velocity is zero. It starts at rest. We're trying to find final angular velocity. We don't know the angular displacement or the angular acceleration, but we know the time is half a second. So we only know two things, we need to find out another. And we can use Newton's second law for rotation to help us find this. The net torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration, or angular acceleration is going to be net torque divided by the moment of inertia. Well, our net torque, torque is fr sine theta divided by moment of inertia. So now we can substitute in our values. Alpha is equal to our force, 150 newtons, times the distance at which, at which it's applied, one meter, times the sine of 90 degrees, that's just going to be one, divided by our moment of inertia, 100 kilogram meters squared, which gives me an angular acceleration of 1.5 radians per second squared. So now I know three things. I can use my kinematics to find the final angular velocity. Final angular velocity is initial angular velocity plus alpha times time, which is going to be zero plus, we just found alpha was 1.5 radians per second squared times our time, 0 0.5 seconds, which gives us a final angular velocity of 0 0.75 radians per second. All right, hopefully that gets you a good start on rotational dynamics, moment of inertia, and Newton's second law for rotation. If you need more help or are looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, everyone, and make it a great day.